Good evening, Premier. Thanks very much um, for your time. It was rather evening, unusual, I must say, for a Premier of a province to deem it necessary to make comparisons with another um, province. Why did you feel the need to make a comparison between Gauteng and the Western Cape? Uh, well, uh, I think, uh, Voyo, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, South in South Africa we, we have uh, different parties in charge uh, at a local level and provincial level in particular. Uh, so when you look at what uh, uh, other premiers say about what they are, they are doing, I, I thought that uh, often uh, people don't look at the scale uh, I took that opportunity when I, I check, uh, especially what Premier Zile was saying in her state of the province address about what they have done, and when I look at the scale of what we have done, and uh, said this is possibly important to share this uh, with the the Gauteng residents to understand that uh, there are a lot of things we are doing in this province at a scale and impact far greater than. Uh, other things being done elsewhere. Why, why, why could you use another ANC run province as, as, as an example or to, to compare Houghton with? Uh, essentially, in the House, uh, in the legislature, we have a lot of what uh, the opposition often says the Western Cape is doing this much better. Ah, the so, Western you were, Cape so you are doing the beating for your party? Uh, essentially, I was uh, just to put uh, the record straight that. Uh, the, uh, if, if they were to give me an opportunity to look at what they are trying to compare Kauten province with uh, regard to the Western Cape, the scale is far much bigger uh, and it's incomparable in every sense of it, the size of our province uh, and in every area of it. And, and I hope uh, that message has been sent through very, very clearly that uh, it is often uh, and, and an unnecessary thing to do to to keep saying to us uh, on jobs the Western Cape is doing better on infrastructure it is doing better on this and that. Uh, now but, let's, but let's it's look. the nature of uh, the business we are in, the business of politics. And let's look at the, some of the numbers that you banded about. To say, Kauteng attracted 199 billion in foreign direct investment, creating over 3,000. Over 30,000. Uh, over 30,000, sorry, um, jobs in the past couple of years, growing the economy five times and so on and so on since 2017. Now, it's one thing to be a beneficiary of something good that happened but it's quite another to have been responsible for what is good in other words what yes. did you do yes as the ANC or well, as thank the you. premier to actually get Gauteng to where it is now thank you um, <clears throat> let's just talk about the economy uh, the, let, let's start here that over five years 469,000 jobs uh, were created in the Gauteng economy. Um, how, how do these jobs get created? We have a very extensive industry government uh, relationship, ongoing engagement through what we call the action labs. For example, from the northern part of our province, which is uh, in Swani, we have we have particular sectors there, the automotive industry, uh, we have the innovation hub working in conjunction with the university as well as uh, the CSIR, the research institutions. Uh, we work with those, those various sectors in the eastern part of our province in Ekuruleni. We have the, the manufacturers basically, the capital equipment manufacturers, the aviation sector. So part of the work we have been doing, Vuyo, is an intensive work with them. We look at the skills. They will say to us, we've got the following challenges for us to grow, in, to, to create more jobs, because that's what the government's agenda is, create more jobs. We need uh, skills, and we will sit down with them and look at what is it that the province uh, is doing and can do. The second thing we would look at is infrastructure in the areas where they are located, including access to basic services like water, electricity, uh, so that they can continue doing the work they do. And then thirdly, access to incentives. So this we have done, Vuyo, with the different sectors uh, from 2014 
uh, in Johannesburg, we had focused on the ICT industry, the pharmaceutical sector. And in the Val, we would focus on the decline in the manufacturing industry and how to revitalize that. In the West Rand, West Rand is the mining area. So in, in dealing with all those issues, there are many areas where business and ourselves will work on issues that we can resolve. Of course, there will be key issues, national issues, visa regulations. Uh, there will be key issues around uh, policy uncertainty where they will say to us, we understand you are a provincial government, you can't deal with this, but fine, please go fair. back to national government. So we have in, in Santin the Gauteng Investment Center, which is now called uh, uh, South Africa Invest. It's one of the South Africa's uh, one-stop shop centers. So the, the Gauteng Investment Center does tremendously good work of interacting with investors on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, bringing in municipalities in that space to deal with issues that need to be cleared, red tape, clear red tape issues, but also go we have the Houting Growth and Investment I mean, Development Agency that goes uh, with, with us in some instances, sometimes alone, to different parts of the world, especially in the continent. Now, why? To promote investment, to promote uh, foreign direct investment in our case, which leads to job creation. So, so this doesn't just happen on its own. Why then, Premier, did uh, this, why didn't this constant um, engagement with stakeholders and uh, the meticulous way in which you saying um, you uh, conduct your business with the private sector to attract investment translate to let's say what happened at life as a domain where clearly um, you were found seriously wanting. In other words, why are you not consistent? In other words, not only where you have to create jobs and so on, but where you have to deliver now social services um, to the poor. Yes, I, I'm glad you are asking this question. You have to understand the, that the, what you do as the premier is to look at the various areas. So what are our priorities? So the economy and jobs is a very important priority. Education Health is not. I'm coming. Wait, wait for me. I want to list what this priority. Education is a very important priority, and we have done extremely well in education. Health is a very important priority. Human settlements, very important. In other words, housing delivery and fighting crime. These are the key priorities of our administration. In each one of these areas, we spend a lot of time interacting with the officials of government, the relevant stakeholders in that sector, to help ensure that we pay attention to the issues, uh, to, um, where we have an ailing system to help get this uh, system to function effectively. Uh, so in that, so health, if you're talking about life as a demand, obviously when you have a number of priority areas, uh, you would not be there every day in each of these spaces. That's, that's just a, a basic human thing. Isn't that, it's not possible. Your, isn't that washing your hands? No, no, it's not washing. I'm not there in education every day. That's why you have MECs. Why, sh why should you have MECs if you would be able to do everything on your own? And why do we employ government officials uh, who are professionals, who get paid a lot of money uh, if uh, it just requires the premier to be there every i can't be in every school every day i can't I'm be not in saying every you have to, hospital you have to be personally there a premier yes. but to make sure that your systems function optimally so yes, that something build. like that never yes. i mean doesn't happen yes you you build over the past five years of uh, of of this uh, anc led administration what i was talking about in the state of the province address is how we have been able to move to move the needle, to get things to work, and where things have not worked, what have we done? Life as a demand is an example. Yes, we have a tragedy there. Uh, when the tragedy occurred, we didn't uh, try to, uh, to cover up. Uh, once Professor Mahoba said, this is what has happened in the specific case of mental health care users in, in Gauteng. Uh, we, we, took, we, took, we took the cudgel, we, we implemented everything that he, he said needs to be implemented, including appointing Justice Mseneke, who did a great job 
which was a painful job, a painstaking job. Uh, we went back after Justice Musinegas ordered us to pay uh, the claims, uh, paid the claims of everybody who was part of the who was part of that process. Th their claims were paid. Of course, there are others who came after the, the award was given. Uh, and then we, we had to undergo a process with the office of the master of the high court to make sure that, uh, as the master's office says, the right, the right uh, people are paid and those, the beneficiaries in the families are the right ones. And that's the part that has delayed uh, the, the conclusion of the matter. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's the point I want to make. Uh, we didn't dodge the issue once it has happened. But when you, when you are engaged uh, in, a, in a process of ensuring that every area of the system works and parts of the system fail, what you have to do is to take action where things didn't work well. Premier, by all accounts, uh, your State of the Province address yesterday uh, was one that was geared at ensuring that people appreciate what you say you have done, yes. but of course uh, akin to give you another mandate for another five years. Uh, looking at the life as it demands anything, looking at the e tolls issue, which clearly you're not getting the ear of your own comrades at the national government on. How confident are you that you will hang on to the economic heartland come May the 8th? Can I first deal with uh, the e tolls uh, before I answer this question? I dealt with life as a demand. We have confronted the issue. Uh, we are following up on every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, on the issue of e tolls, uh, yesterday I said, Oh, look, in the last state of the province address, February last year, that this matter is now going to receive the attention of President Ramaphosa. And the year has passed without the year, any movement. The year has passed, but there is work happening there. The only thing is that we're not happy with that progress. And that's why the ANC in the province uh, sent the president a letter. But I said yesterday again that knowing that the president has many issues every day to deal with, uh, all I must take the president's word when he says, uh, Premier, the issue of e-tolls is one of those issues that I am looking at. They are, they are receiving my national attention. Uh, at least one thing is clear, that urban tolling as we have had it, that this issue of, that's to toll an area that is compact and small uh, instead of distance, uh, uh, I mean, long distance tolling where people don't have to drive in the same circle as many times in a day, whether these are small business people or pro people who are going to their work, it's not viable. That's, it, that's, that's something very clear now. What is the next step is what needs to be done. And I, I can't doubt when the president says this matter is receiving my attention. Like many issues that are receiving his attention, for you, you and I know he's dealing with ESCOM. He's dealing with everything that has to do with the state institutions in our country. So I am very confident. I have no doubt. I can't doubt him that this matter is receiving his attention. He oh, moved from the same premise with us. Urban tolling is not sustainable because it increases the cost of living. Well, I was going to ask you why then your uh, province resorted to even writing an open letter if you are not desperate and frustrated. But we've run out of time. I'm sorry, Premier, we'll have to leave it there. Yeah, I, I want to say that with regard to the... We live in a democracy. It's, it's, it's the voters who decide who to put there. Uh, the voters need to be engaged. They need to be given an opportunity. They will decide on the 8th of May. They and, and they will decide. Uh, we have done the work we needed to do. I'm very confident as the, as the chairperson of the ANC. Thank you very much for coming through. Gauteng Premier David Makura.